got Lisa Spangler back here on the program. She's going to be fighting an Invicta FC 31 on September 1st. On short notice, she's taking on Shayna Young. Lisa, how are you today? I'm pretty good. Awesome. Well, that's Not good to hear. Bad. I know you had some errands to do today. Uh, you know, I appreciate you having, uh, you know, taking the time. How is it balancing things, especially when you have a short notice fight like this? Oh, well, I only work three days a week, so it hasn't been like, you know, it hasn't been too bad. But, you know, there's always stuff in life that happens. But honestly, the camp has been running pretty smoothly. Good. And of course, uh, you this is on short notice, like I mentioned. Uh, when exactly did you find out about this fight? Um, I, I believe you were saying, you know, a couple of weeks ago you were telling me. Yeah, it was about two, two and a half weeks ago that I found out. Okay. Were you expecting to get on this card? Like, were you waiting for a short notice opportunity? Or was it just one of those things your manager's like, hey, we got a spot open? Well, he knew that this card was coming up like a couple months ago. So he's been trying to get me on it for a while. So it was kind of um, like after my last fight, it was kind of in the back of my mind that I'd probably be fighting around now. So it wasn't too much of a surprise. And is this kind of one of those love-hate situations? I know you typically like, you know, two months before uh, an upcoming fight, but at the same time, it's probably good to get, you know, three fights in this year. You know, you're getting, uh, you know, certainly adding up that record. Yeah, sorry, something was happening with my... Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's good to keep fighting, especially in MMA. Um, it kind of keeps your name uh, relevant. <laughs> No, it's, it's certainly good that way. And we got to talk about your last way. You get that majority decision over Kelly Clayton at a Cage Sport 52. I know you would have liked the finish, but you must have been pretty happy with your performance getting the win. Yeah, I mean, for me, a win's a win, no matter what. I mean, there's always stuff to work on. Um, I know that fight, there's a lot of things I could have done, you know, better or different. So I just kind of learned from them. And, and do you feel like, you know, heading into this fight, because it's your second fight for Invicta, that, you know, you kind of get those jitters out of the way. Like, do you feel a little bit more comfortable heading into this match, even though it's short notice? I mean, I can't really tell until I get there. You know, I don't really get nervous until it's, like, the day of the fight. Right, like right now, I'm pretty calm. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and did you know anything about Shayna before you took this fight? Because uh, I know she fought recently for Valor. Um, not really. I know, I'm pretty sure she's into jujitsu. I think she's, um, like more of a grappler, but that's all I really know. Um, I know she's no slouch. She's got, she's 4-0, oh, so I'm excited. Yeah, it should be a good test. Um, are you still at the stage in your career where you don't really worry too much about the opponent? You're more worried about what you can bring to the table? Yeah, that's how it's always been, really. Um... I kind of let my manager figure it out. Um, he knows my skill level compared to other people, I guess, and he, he doesn't try to set me up for failure or anything, but he doesn't look for people who they could easily beat either. So That's good. Okay. And uh, how's training camp been going, and who have been some of your uh, main training partners for this fight? Uh, uh, well, I just did a sparring session with uh, Amy Montenegro, Liz Tracy, and uh, up and coming amateur Faith Davis. Um, I, uh, I train a lot with Margot Testa, but it was nice to get um, all those girls together because a lot of them had to travel to get here. But I've seen them a couple times this camp. Yeah, so you're getting different looks. I, I guess that you know must boost the confidence a little bit. Getting a you know bunch of different looks. So if you're in the fight, you see those different types of situations. Yeah, 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 because. You know, Amy and Liz, they're uh, really good with, like, takedowns and stuff like that. And then Faith is really good at uh, Muay Thai. So it's nice to get all those kind of rounds in in one sparring session. Yeah. No, that's excellent. Um, how about the weight cut? I imagine, uh, you know, as soon as you found out about this fight, you are like, ah, I got to get back on the weight cut. Yeah, I didn't really gain too much weight. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty much on track. That's good. And uh, who's going to be in your corner for this fight? I'll have uh, Fabiano Scherner, Ian King, um, and Mark Rizzosa is coming along as well. Good to have a bunch of extra people there, which is always nice. Uh, how do you see this fight playing out on the first? Um, I don't know. I never really think about that. I just kind of go into the fight 
um, and stick to the game plan my coaches tell me, like, you know, in between rounds. Um, I used to visualize things, but I feel like it just makes me more nervous, I guess. So I'll just get in there and fight. No, that's good. That's what you have to do, right? You always have a game plan until, uh, you know, someone throws the first punch, as they say, right? So that, that's always interesting. Um, are you looking to get in one more fight this year, or is that it? You're just like, you know what, I'm done. 2018, we'll put it in the books, or you want to stay more active? Um, this will probably be it for the year, unless, you know, something comes up. Um, but we're thinking it's that's it for this year. That's good. Uh, what about downtime right now? What, what have you been up to uh, as far as, you know, hanging out with your friends and things like that? What, what have you been doing to kind of break up the monotony of training and work and everything else? I mean, uh, we went to a Pearl Jam concert. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> How was yeah. it? It was awesome. Yeah, yeah and it was Pearl in Jam Seattle. Fan? Yeah, I mean, I have the Oh, well, there the you shirt. go. I was going to say, that would be a little weird if you weren't a fan of them and you wore the shirt, right? So that, that's good. You actually have proof that you went to the concert. That's great. Yeah. So, I saw Pearl Jam at Wrigley Field uh, like two years ago, two or three years ago, and it was amazing. Like I actually flew to Chicago just to go see them in concert, and they had like this huge thunderstorm, and so they had to like stop the concert, and then they came out like later like to finish the rest of the concert. So the concert didn't finish till like two in the morning, but that's how awesome Eddie Vedder is. That guy's the man. Wow, yeah, and I had to go to work at 6 a.m. the oh, next day. Go. Okay, good stuff. So you got home at like 3 a.m. I uh, slept for an hour and then went to work. Okay, that's good. Are you a big concert goer, or do you just go whenever you you have the chance? Um, yeah, whenever we have like you know the money to go and stuff, we're going to Smashing Pumpkins on the 25th. Nice. That's good. You're covering all the 90s bands. If you could resurrect Nirvana, <laughs> then you'd be uh, doing the hat trick there. That's that's good. So that's uh, where 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 was the concert in Seattle? It was um, or is it Safeco Field? Oh, nice! That's a great uh, yeah. great stadium there. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, is it, is it good for concerts? I know there, it's obviously like a baseball park. So did did you find it was pretty good? Yeah, yeah, it definitely was. Okay, that's good. And how were they live? I re that was like one of the best concerts I'd ever been to, just because like he said, Eddie Vedder's got like a killer voice. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was. I was, like, crying the whole time. Really? You got emotional. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you, have you, So I imagine they're, like, as far as, like, top bands, they're, like, right up there for you. Yeah, that's, like, hard for me to – there's, like, so many bands I'm into, it's hard to put it into – but, yeah, they're, like, one of the top. So do you like the older stuff, like the grunge music? Is that sort of where your, your you know, your favorite stuff lands, or are you just like everything? Um, yeah, I like 90s grunge, and then I also like metal and, like, alternative 2000s, stuff like that. What's going to be your walkout music for this fight? Um, it might be Tool this time. Cool, okay. And I, I didn't mean to rhyme there, by the way. I actually, I, Tool is just a really good band, so that, that's, that's great. And uh, this is going to be an awesome fight. It's coming up here September 1st. It's Invicta FC 31, live on UFC Fight Pass. Uh, Lisa, it was uh, great getting a chance to catch up with you again. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you have any sponsors or shout-outs, the floor is yours. All right. Uh, for Instagram, it's SpanglerLisa22. And then Facebook is just Lisa Spangler. Um, I have two of them. It's the one that has a picture of me doing something athletic. <laughs> it usually changes all the time. Um, and obviously, Gracie Baja Portland, my gym, uh, Papa Joe's Barbecue. It's a food truck in Vancouver. Instant Imprints, they're also in, Va in Vancouver, and they do all the printing on my gear. Um, Hard Winter Strength and Conditioning, MV's Designs. Northwest Syndicate, Athlete Management, um, Portland Gee Company, Jurassic Cart, which is a, a food cart on Foster, um, Daniel Garrison Photography, he owns Instant Imprints, Karma Fight Gear, Bridge City Fight Shop, um, Nutrition by Max Muscle, and then Vivid Fight Gear.